Hi everyone, I'm Liberty Doll and welcome to my channel. I am shaking things up a little bit this week as I wanted to cover the Boston Free Speech Rally that happened on August 19th, but it's been pretty difficult to actually find any fair and unbiased media reporting on this event. So instead, I have with me today Michael Linskog, who is one of the speakers scheduled for the event. Thank you, Michael, for joining me today. Good evening. <laughs> So, uh, cameo from my cat. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, my, my dog used to come and in, uh, interrupt me all the time anyway. So <laughs> we love animals here. Right. Uh, so the first question that I wanted to ask you, <laughs> million dollar question is what actually made you decide to get involved with the Boston free speech rally? I thought it was very important to be an individual to stand up for what I thought was right. Mm -hmm. And I think free speech is an extremely important right for all of us to, uh, basically, if we don't have free speech, the only op option is force of right. one person on another. And it's paramount for us to exchange ideas with those we disagree with in order to find new viewpoints and to evolve our own understanding of what any particular subject is. I know that unfortunately there has not been much of a platform out there for free speech recently. I know that after the Boston rally back in May actually, Mayor Marty Walsh told the media that the Boston Free Speech Coalition are good people, but then Charlottesville happened and everyone started disavowing and denouncing and like Charlie Baker put out that public proclamation saying that we denounce racism and we're going to send this document to Virginia and to the president and you know Boston Globe came out with an article condemning you guys and trying to link you up to Charlottesville and like Pizzagate and then <laughs> Marty Walsh started telling people to stay away from the commons and not go because that's what the Southern Poverty Law Center told him etc 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 um, NAACP said similar things so did um, the violence in Boston organization that started the fight supremacy counter rally if that's what we can call it so with all that going on what kind of things did the Boston Free Speech Coalition do to try to like distance themselves from Charlottesville so right off the jump uh, we made press statements basically denouncing uh, supremacy ideology and bigotry Mm -hmm. um, we believe in a platform. We believe every individual has the right to free speech, but we also have the right to free association and who we decide to give our platform to or who we're going to give a microphone to. And I, I saw something that said um, you guys actually offered a spot to someone from BLM if they wanted to come and have you know, their say and, and their position, and they actually turned it down, saying that they didn't need you guys to have a voice? Is that true? Yeah. Um, <laughs> you, you try and reach out to these folks and they they try and they don't, they don't necessarily try and force you to agree with their positions, but they don't necessarily have an open mind to hear your side of what you're trying to speak on. And I know that... Um, you know, despite all these media reports, the Anti-Defamation League actually did come out and say, no, as far as we know, this is an actual free speech rally. These people aren't Nazis, they're not white supremacists, they're not any other form of racist, but it sounds like that kind of just fell on deaf ears and, you know, didn't really reach many of the media reports. All week, the, the week <laughs> leading up to our rally, um, it was a smear campaign. And they were calling us white nationalists, white supremacists, neo-Nazis, far right. But we really have a diverse group of individuals that's in our Boston free speech movement. Um, um, everyone from green parties to libertarians, conservatives, and basically everything in between. Right. I actually saw um, that Ann Armstrong like blessed the rally beforehand. Uh, and I met her at a libertarian meetup. Oh, goodness, years ago now. And, I mean, I can't imagine anyone calling her any sort of supremacist anything. Pretty much all she ever talks about is, 
is, you know, free pot for spiritual healing. <laughs> yep. yep. <laughs> they were uh, they were definitely uh, a unique set of individuals to to start it off. They they said a prayer, they sang a song, and they smoked mm -hmm. a joint. <laughs> and uh, yeah, just looking for peace. Uh, there was disappointment with uh, amongst the group. I think there was disappointment in the masses, just how easily people can be pers not persuaded. Uh, it, I heard a quote that it, this past week that really applied. It, it's easier to fool a man than to convince him he's been fooled. Mm -hmm. And it's just hard to believe uh, the level of lies that people would bring right. to, to smear good people that are trying to stand up. Everybody's rights of free speech. And do you think that that would have happened even without Charlottesville? Um, I don't think so. I think they would have ignored us like they did in May. We had a May rally, and uh, we probably had 300 people show up. I think there was probably 50 Antifa on the hill that were yelling at us. And then we had the <laughs> cops in between us. They kept the peace all day. Uh, there was a little skirmish here and there, but nothing major. Uh, we went. We spoke our piece. And yeah, basically the media ignored us that day because unless they have something bad to report on you, they're going to just leave you out of the news cycle. I, I don't think I had even heard about that rally until long after it happened. Yeah, it was, it was the first one. And uh, this, this organization or this coalition or group or loose association of freedom-minded individuals was started by 17-year-olds and a couple 20-year-olds. So oh, wow. They definitely, yeah, it was, I was very inspired by them. I was just a speaker at the first one, and then after Charlottesville, uh, they had a lot of madness coming their way, so the workload quadrupled overnight. <laughs> so me and a few other friends came on board and uh, helped them all out and tried to make it the best event we could. And I heard that there was actually some speakers and organize, organizers that backed out last minute because they were getting death threats. Yeah. Yeah. So with the lies comes the slander and then the people want it, to, it's, it's basically a snowball effect where people start saying one thing, it's a he said, she said, it's a telephone game. And then eventually the people come to the park and speak about civil rights all of a sudden are neo-Nazis and white supremacists. <laughs> Even the Indian guy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Now, did you get any thing as extreme as death threats or or pushback from anyone in your personal life? Um, not personally. I've done some, uh, not not damage control, but I've I've gotten ahead of these things that could have been an issue, and I've spoken to my employer, and they know me as an individual, and we're really close with one another. So, if I ever got doxxed or people were trying to get me fired because I have controversial viewpoints. Uh, I know that they'd be willing to work with me, so that's one well, thing. Well, really, I mean, it's a sad day that free speech even has to be considered a, a controversial viewpoint. But you don't necessarily have to be conservative to believe in free speech. I know that on the list there were libertarians, there were ANCAPs, there were there was a Bernie supporter, wasn't there? Someone from the Green Party. Yep, so I mean, yep. it runs the gamut. This doesn't have to be something that's controversial. It, it's insanity. I don't. I don't even know. It. It. It's too crazy to even. If. If this was fiction, people wouldn't believe it. 